Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, this is a recap of composing in full media, part 17, Waves. In today's episode, we set out to work further with what we call the duck octet, which is eight couplets. And we did that. We also wanted to extract the remaining lines from our combined theme score into a further subscore, and we did that. It's called the not used yet sestet, <clears throat> except it's a septet now. And then we wanted to explore scale figure time overlays. Overlays. So in terms of the duck octet, this is where we have gotten to here. Let's move over to that on the right hand side where you can see things. Here. We kept the walking beat right and left, but we changed the timbre to a woodblock and we fiddled with the timing and this is now what we have. For this eight line piece. Oops, we forgot. We want to mute that part here. Wait a minute. Ah, tricky, tricky. I'm going to mute that part. We can do that. Here we go. So what we like about that is that we're having the image in our mind of a duck kind of waddling on the land. And so there's a tick tock waddle beat under there, which is very different from the turtle beat that we use on the turtle sestet. And we end up using a wood block with two different pitches to get that. So, and we actually edit it until we we actually shift the beat twice in there. You don't hear it per se unless you're composing it, but we shifted the walking beat here by sticking in a one second buffer. And then we went back and sticking in another one second buffer. So that was kind of cool. We like the rhythm of that a lot. So that was our work on the duck octet. Then as we said, we went and extracted the remaining lines from our original um, combined Raga and Sight themes piece of work, which had something like 20, 20 separate lines in it. And we took six out and made the turtle sestet, and we took eight out and made the duck octet. And it turned out we still had six lines left over that we wanted to do something with. And so we put them in here and rearranged them and duplicated one of them once. So this is our not used yet sestet. And let's double check what we have muted and so forth. Here we go. And what we like about that is we're still using the Raga theme and the Sight theme together. We had to repeat the Sight theme in the middle to have it feel right because we actually repeated a Raga variation twice. We didn't have any leftover Sight theme, so we just reused a Sight theme and it balanced. And then we kind of like how it ends with this emptiness where you've been hearing the this theme so much, or at least we have, It's in here.
and and our brain our minds are left to kind of fill in the missing part kind of like a, an aural illusion with a visual illusion so so we're pleased with that so that was the septet and then as we said we started working with doing um, the overlays on the shadow scale figures and the way we did that is we went to each one of our original 12 scales where we'd worked out all of these ramps and hops and rolls and things and we decided to start with the the um, the four note shadow common scale which has a hop like this but we slowed it way down to this and then we overlaid it and then came down And then um, that sounded pretty decent. Now some of these get to be sounding pretty dissonant, like this is the uncommon mi minor. And we discovered a little trick. We said, well, you can mute alternate lines. So instead of getting the effect of skipping an eighth beat before you start the repeat, we skip two eighth beats or a quarter beat, and then we start down here. So we've muted this line and muted this line, and then we can get a different sound like this. And that sounds pretty darn good. And that's the minor scale. And then if we alternate which lines we mute like this, Again, it sounds good. So what we realized is that for each of these um, scales that we've generated these figures for, the things, whether you mute alternate lines or leave them standing, is something we kind of explore on a case-by-case -case basis to pick out things that sound cool. Um, that was the minor major. This is the uncommon major. But the most complex scale of all is the shadow full shadow full which is way 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 down here this one and and the hop one is kind of the most complicated overlay we've got 10 lines and it just gets to sounding too full so what we're going to do is mute some lines and just let it run through the hops. Uh, we'll, we'll mute every other line here. And we'll play that and then we'll close out. Here we go. The shadow full scale hop one overlays with the only the odd number lines playing. down now hop twos sound more dissonant as the hop interval is different. Same alternate lines are muted. Now another uh, bigger hop interval, hop of three. So that one gets um, the dissonant notes against each other. And of course, the more notes that are playing simultaneously, the louder it is. Uh, 
top five. And the bigger interval, six. Seven. Eight. And the last one. And of course, if we had a hop 10, that would just be going from C to root C and root uh, C octave and C octave back to C. So when we listen to those, we feel there are certain sweet spots of um, consonant series and then kind of sour spots of more dissonant. On the other hand, as, as you all know from the series, we like that dissonant and we like mixing consonant and dissonant and and the discordant sounds have more energy so when you want more energy you, you go for some of that and when you want to relax or settle down you go for the other so that concludes today's stream our ideas for next time listen further to the parallel hops and alternate lines muting uh, complete the remaining hops we have six scales left to go none of them are as big as shadow full um, go back and try some timbres again. Maybe the recorder timbre will sound better with some of these sweet spot hops. Um, then, now that we have three extracted pieces, um, work scores, the turtle and the duck and the to be named, <laughs> might they go back together in a new sequence, something we may call a bayou sonnet. Um, we need to compose further the duck octet lyric. Oh, we didn't talk about that. We did do some work on the lyric today. Uh, we had gotten a suggestion from somebody about looking at how different languages represent the sounds of animals. For example, in English, a duck goes quack quack. And in Chinese Mandarin, a duck goes guang guang. So we thought, okay, cool, we'll, we'll work with that. And we actually uh, wrote a line the duck doth waddle and go gua gua to breed and brood and ducklings nurture. So we got gua gua in there and then we th threw in our theme word of nurture. So anyway, further to go there for a duck sestet or maybe an octet. It all depends. Maybe we should be saying octet here. So you see, we've been having a lot of fun today. Duck goes gua gua. Not only that, in different languages, uh, we won't, let's, let's not digress. That was fascinating to look that up. That was a brilliant suggestion. Okay. Uh, and then we're looking at names for this septet. Is it a fish septet? Is it a snake septet? We've seen both of those in the bayou that we walk over every morning. A shout out to Resident Bedwarmer Online. We had quite a, a good chat talking about learning music and uh, hope to see you again resident that concludes today's stream thank you all for your time attention interest curiosity patience look forward to seeing you in the next episode as always keep on streaming